Till the whistle blows, so run, come enjoy the show. Isa, school. We're live in Clarendon. Central Jamaica, Glenmuir High School in particular, as we get ready to go deep into the cost of action right here. And the two teams on the agenda in the scorching sunshine here. Kemp's Hill against Veer Technical as the 2023 edition of the Dacosta Cup goes into another gear here. And the field absolute lush. One of the better fields in rural area Jamaica and two matches will be played on it this afternoon and you will see how smooth the surface is once these teams get on it and it's really hot here maybe a little bit of rain later on but of course that would affect the conditions here and both teams are hoping that uh, it's uh, good all around to play some football there is the Veer technical team looking to make their way onto the field it's going to be an interesting evening with the numbers uh, being in white against the yellow shirts. But again, it's a discussion that we have every single season with the combination of colors that we see here in schoolboy football. This is a little better. And we're talking about Kemsil here with uh, their blue apparel and the white numbers. The font, of course, is uh, uh, has left a lot to be desired. But again, another conversation needs to be had. My name is Donald Oliver. I'm with DJ Williams, who seems to be eager uh, eagerly anticipated the start of this one here. Yeah, um, you know, uh, I haven't really been in action as of late, and I've been waiting on schoolboy football to restart. And here I am, the Costa Cup action, Kemsil, the team who started off schoolboy football last year. They were in the very first match against Garvey Maceo. They're back again for their TV outing, very technical a team that has so much history, so much pride, and they'll be looking to return to former glories and that's going to start in this season, they hope, against Kemsil today. The officials leading out the team as they make their way out to the middle. And uh, there they are. Going against each other in just a few minutes' time in this Group M encounter. Kemsil, of course, they have started action in the Costa Cup. This is going to be their second game of the season. They got by Tisha Scolding by four goals to very technical there they are playing their first game of the season they have been dominant in this fixture very technical over the last few seasons winning eight and losing three and drawing seven matches over this Kemsil team who last recorded a win over very technical all the way back in 2015 so it has been a minute since they picked up three points against very technical and they are lacking in goals as well having scored just four times in their last 10 outings against Veer Technical. So they have a lot to prove and Veer Technical, they have a lot to maintain as far as their standards are concerned. Quite a few players coming back from last season's squad for Veer Technical. And I count around four or five of them who were regular starters last season who are starting today. We'll go into details of that in just a little while. Kemsel, they are the home team, as I mentioned, they, they are in blue. And yeah, just about two or three starters coming back to apply their trade this season. And there is a starting lineup for Kemsil. Omaria Chambers, who was on the bench for most of last season, is between the sticks in front of him. Jordan Dyke, Anthony Brown, Robert Crawford, and Roshan Thomas in the middle of the park. Shaquille Goldburn, J Janiki Howell, Junior Robinson, and up top, Shamar Daly, Cornel Smith, the center forward, and Dante Miller. As so we take a look at the officials for today's game, Mr. Plummer, of course, is the one in the middle. Kemsu winning the toss. And uh, it will be very technical with first strike. As we take a look at the very technical starting lineup, Ricardi Thomas is now between the sticks for very technical, having started on the bench for the majority of the time last season. Devante Hansen over on the left, Kimran Walters on the right, and Neville Latchman and Andre Andre Scott in the middle in the back line. 
Akim Ashura is the holding midfielder and the captain, Jamari Foster and Kemoy Hunt in front of him. Malcolm Lennon on the left, Nathaniel Henry on the right, and Patrick Page is a centre forward uh, for Veer Technical. Howard Cephas there, coach of Veer Technical, has coached Veer United as well in the Jamaica Premier League among his roles in the past. He'll be looking to, as I mentioned, return glory to this Veer Technical team. Vera team esteemed especially if you're a bit older in this Clarendon Parish let's see what they can produce against Kems Hill and we are on the way here Kemsel driving forward through Miller, heading to the byline, three to aim for, can he get a good cross? No, he can't. Goes behind for a, a goal kick, so quick start to the game here. Yeah, can already see the intent from Kemsel's captain, marauding down that right-hand side. Dante Miller there, two goals and an assist. In the first game. Of course, high heat in this game, so I think sustaining a press will be really difficult for Kemsil. Here they come. Veer Hansen. Couldn't quite supply the pass. Kemsel will try again. Robbed of possession. Manages to keep his balance and keep stock of the ball. Hopeful ball through the middle. But they are back in numbers there, Veer. Latchman across to Devante Hansen. It appears that Veer, they have made a late change. We're going to try and confirm that to the starting lineup. And number nine on the park in Romain McLean. Well, that's what we have as a part of the squad. McLean wearing the number nine. We see him in the starting lineup. Trying to provide the pass on that occasion. Ball coming inside and no issues there for Chambers. Well, the ball played out wide. Can he keep it in play? I don't think so. You can already see that this game might be a little bit of a cat and mouse affair. Kemp still looking to hit those attacking zones as quickly as possible when getting the ball. Veer looking to be a little bit more patient when they have it.
Kemp still on the attack here. Shot on target by Junior Robinson. Nothing too threatening though for for Thomas. Dwight Thomas there, the Dwight Smith, sorry, the manager for Kemsale. Here's an attempt, oh, that's a wonderful save from Chambers. Moving to his left, had to get fingertips on it. Well, they take the lead and uh, we are united with the advantage in the sixth minute of play. We are technical rather, take the advantage in the sixth minute of play. And uh, they were applying so much pressure since the start of this game. And Jamari Foster with the, the goal here. Yeah, it was a quickly taken corner once it was swung in by Nathaniel Henry. He was really unmarked. He had all the time in the world, all the space in the world to place that head, and he did place it well. Yeah, and that's a good first goal for Vare Technical in this the Costa Cup season. And six minutes in, Donald, you mentioned previously that Vare were the dominant team in this fixture over the past couple of years. They're looking to assert, reassert that dominance. And it's a really good start. Another quickly taken set piece. And the Kemp still trying to clear, not clearing properly. And another opportunity here, just wide of the mark. Well, you have to give some credit to Chambers, who advanced off his line really quickly and uh, put some pressure on Jamari Foster, who was looking for his second goal in as many minutes there. Yeah, he was really close as well. Got there first, but couldn't direct that one on target. Can already see that he is playing attacking midfield, but he is looking to crush the box whenever possible. Jamari Foster. Never on top in the early goings. Howard Seifas there, head coach of Veer Technical. He mentioned in his pre-match interview that winning is the, well, quite frankly, the aim of life. So that's what he wants to do with this Veer Technical team. They're after a really good start. Junior Robinson was impeded there. Requested the free kick. And uh, he was given by referee Plummer. Both teams started starting relatively brightly here in the afternoon sun. Obviously not easy conditions. Need to make better use of the opportunities though, Kems Hill. Wasted attempt in the set piece department on that occasion. Yeah, a bit more quality required. And see very technical, being really patient in their build-up, involving the defenders a lot. It's going to be really tough, as I mentioned, for Kemsil to really step out and press in this heat. So if very technical can keep the ball moving, especially with this advantage that they already have, it might be a relatively comfortable afternoon for them. Well, here's Kemsil trying to break free. 
and uh, they will get a, a corner kick. Yeah, it won't be comfortable if they give it away in those spots. Let's see if Kemsil can deliver a better set piece than they did the last time. Seems as if Rashan Thomas will be heading over to swing this one in. So, what, three players inside the box for Kemsil? Made that forward now. Oh, well, that's disappointing. Ball sent out wide. It's a beautiful ball, you know. Switching the play over to the right. Couple players inside the box. For Veer. Lining up a shot that's well wide and the keeper coming to collect. Ball hit into space. But a uh, strong challenge coming in from Anthony Brown. Seems to be okay in the aftermath of that challenge. The defender. And here's Veer once more. Lays it inside the area. Went through bodies. Henry making good move and sends it across. Oh, spilled by the keeper. Chambers had to recover and made up for the initial mistake by parrying it away from the danger area. And here's Kemsil now trying to respond. not quite making use of the advantage but they still have possession until they don't Goldberg losing it in a critical area Latchman. Yeah, I said that Kemsil would be wise to not engage a press. I didn't mean that they would sit this deep, inviting very technical onto them. And that one given against Veer. Yeah, Kemsil sitting really deep. A lot of bodies behind the ball. Yeah, this was an opportunity that they had earlier, and Chambers making the initial mistake, and then had to parry it away before Foster could uh, let fly there. Yeah, a lot of intent from there. I see that going down the wings, especially on that right-hand side, get crosses in. Wingbacks clearly a key fixture of their team. The wingers as well saw Nathaniel Henry not too long on screen. Crowd trickling in. We have a good, a good crowd actually. It's these, a good gathering. Yeah, these these all client and affairs tend to bring out. I was about to say the locals, but I feel like that would be a bit wrong. They are scheduled to have a couple of water breaks here. And this is not the official water break, but I can tell you that the players deserve it regardless. Yeah. It usually comes midway each half, but with about 14 minutes gone, they need it. They're the ones with a level of comfort in the, sh in the shade over on the far side. Yeah, but I think even in the shade, as I'm sure you can attest and I can as well. It's humid. Yeah, it's still very hot.
I suspect that this place is going to be jam-packed in a couple of hours. You just have to be careful where you're perched. before about the jerseys and the numbers and the fonts that we are seeing in schoolboy football this season and in a word it has been a little disappointing to be fair for quite a few of the the outfit that we're seeing but here's Veer trying to come forward and get a second in this one lovely skill going through and the third goes on on the edge of the box it's a free kick to Veer technical yeah, that was some lovely skill. Patrick Page on that occasion, wheeling and dealing between a few challenges. And eventually got chopped down right before he was about to go in the box. Good strength shown initially to hold off that challenge. And then after that, he was just pure silk. Yeah, they couldn't contain him. I think he's the favorite to try and whip in this free kick. He also has some competition seemingly from Malcolm Lennon. Yeah, Lennon is lining up with his left foot and he may be favored to do this here. And Lennon, well, no issues there for Chambers. Yeah, it's a, it's a difficult one to get it up and over the wall. He did that, but he didn't do it with enough pace to trouble Chambers. Touched out wide. Lennon touches it inside. Henry. Attacking the byline, Henry. Gets a throw for his team. Nivere really penning. Kem still in. Oh, lovely touch. Weaving his way inside the box and then lays it on a platter. And the shot well over the bar. Yeah, we're seeing some real influence now by Malcolm Lennon. Two silky touches in within a minute, really, and really good chance created there for his teammate, but good attempt. It was a powerful one, but yeah, he was blazed right over. Very technical, really starting to turn the screw now. They won it again. Yep. And Chambers had to be alert once more. Not the best distribution on that occasion. Here's the captain, Shira was one of the centre-backs, if I recall, last year. Akeem Shara, but he's playing in the holding midfield for his team. Here is, again, trying to spread that one through. That's a delightful ball, you know. Ball whipped inside the area, and again, Chambers into the action. There he is. Akeem Shariah, wearing the captain's armband this season. And giving a more bold playing role for his team. Is there a handle ball there? Referee calling it late. Possibly was looking to see if Kempsey would get the advantage. They didn't. They'll have been on the ropes the past 15 minutes or so. Let's see if they can 
find a way back into this game with the set piece. The deliveries haven't been, let's just say, to the best quality so far. No, they've been a little bit disappointing. Trying to apply the pressure on Veer Technical on a couple of occasions, but unable to with their set pieces. Hansen, first time inside to the goal scorer in Foster. And the flag goes up for offside. Here is Veer once more. A shot from distance is a good strike, and Chambers couldn't quite hold him on. And he was a bit fortunate there, went wide of the target. But Kemoy Hunt rifling that one from distance, or what was Lennon rather, hitting that one from distance. Yeah, he's certainly started to turn the screw, Malcolm Lennon. Really good left foot he has. Here's the corner kick, high. And it goes behind. Although Veer have had the better of this fixture the, over the past couple of years, really, the games have tended to be a bit close. Howard Cephas there, manager, the fourth different manager for Veer United. In the last four seasons, he followed Ryan Johnson in 2022, Hugh Howell in 2021, and right before the pandemic break. Well, here is Kem Sill trying to get back on terms. The effort from Keneal Smith was charged down. Yeah, I was saying very united. A bit used to that because he used to manage them, Howard Cephas, but yeah, very technical. Four managers in four seasons, Vera are a team that like to change things around. Howard Cephas the latest in that charge to try and see if they can really get back to what they used to be. Nine the Costa Cup titles, all between 1965 and 1980, so it's it's been a long time coming. But they've certainly started today like they have the makings of a program that maybe can return to those glories. Very calm in possession. Looks as if they have some talent up front as well. Well, if we're gonna judge that by how they perform against Kem Sil, well they should be they should have been progressing for quite some time over the last few years. Because they have used Kemsil as a, a beating stick for the past few seasons, but Kemsil having last got the better of uh, Veer Technical in 2015. Yeah, Kemsil haven't had the best of it in the past couple of seasons, really. One point each in the past two seasons. But funnily enough, their one point last season was against the at the time, the reigning the Costa Cup champions in Garvey Maceo, the very first game of the 2022 schoolboy football season. I was wondering if it means that they really like those TV games, but they haven't started this game in that same vein. Ball over the top. It's a delightful touch inside the area. Forced away from goal, though and losing a little bit of momentum, but they'll try again. Henry's out wide. Four players lurking inside the area. It's a, a cross that's picked up at the back post. And Chambers ticking a leg out. And it's a corner kick. But there is going to be a, a break in the proceedings as the official water break is now being taken. But we take a look at the last chance there. And Chambers... Maybe it was going wide, but he wasn't certain. Sticking the leg out and denying that chance for Veer Technical to go 2-0 up. 
Yeah, Veer really plugging away now. I'm, so, I'm surprised. I'm sure their coaches as well, they haven't gotten that second goal. But if they continue playing like this, I can see two, three, maybe four, maybe even more against this Kemsil team. I'm sure Dwight Smith will be telling them, you know, just focus, try and get back defensive organization. But Veer have definitely been the team on top the past 23 minutes, or the first 23 minutes. Yep, the, for the goal, it was a, a corner kick that was taken quickly in the ball, lost it inside the area, it was a free header, wasn't it? Jamari Foster making no mistake inside the box, guiding that one, looping header. Chambers was well off his line, having no chance to make the save there, but a good goal by Veer. So that's the difference between these teams. Very technical with the advantage over Kem Sill at this water break. I'm sure the spectators understand why there is a water break as well. Really, really hot day. Over 33 degrees as we saw earlier. see if they're giving some further instructions to his troops. That's the hallmark of a good manager, never being satisfied with what your team is producing, always wanting more. I know Dwight Smith definitely will want more from his Kemsil team. They need that the they need at minimum one goal. Firstly, they'll have to defend this corner. They'll be coming up from Veer. Chambers has, has a lot of work to do on Mario Chambers in goal for Kems Hill. With a lot of young players they can be inconsistent when we've seen it from the custodian so far in this game. Let's see how he handles this corner kick. Here's the delivery. Pretty much wasted by Veer. Well, they don't have an outlet, do they? Kems Hill. Yeah, they haven't been keeping the ball well at all, really. Kems Hill. That's just led to sustained pressure by Veer. Walters with a chip to the edge of the box. Oh, lovely first touch. And I'm not sure why he didn't go for the shot, you know. He seemed intent. Kemoy Hunt and trying to string one through. Yeah, Kim Sil still making it really easy for Veer. Not sure if they are utilizing the width very well, Kem Sill. At times they had opportunities to play it out wide, and let's see what happens on this time or around. Nice movement. Walters. Hey. 
Henry. Sarah. Latchman. Latchman didn't play last year. The big center back. Not sure the specific reason why he didn't play last year, the number 14, but yes, he, he could play and decided against being part of the squad. So this is his first season in the Da Costa Cup. Maybe he was just a late bloomer in terms of his footballing ability. Maybe. But he certainly seems very comfortable as a centre-back. Calm on the ball thus far. There he is. Not sure if we'd call Theodore Whitmore a late bloomer, but he himself didn't play the Dacosta Cup either. Of course, he attended St. James, St. James High. In uh, the parish of St. James out west, of course. So it does happen, but the Issa Schoolboy football competition usually the breeding ground for a number of the best local talents. Kempsel trying desperately to respond here, and he's your danger man, Dante Miller, trying to go it alone on that occasion. Didn't quite work out, and it goes the other way. And this is Patrick Page. Lovely to get by one. Running away from defenders. Page gets it by a third. And uh, it's hacked out of the area by Anthony Brown. Had to do so quickly because B Page was bearing down on goal. Yeah, he had it all to do and he was this close to doing it, Page. It was really all hands to the wheel there for Kem Seal. <laughs> As he... <laughs> As their right back takes a little rest. But yeah, Page doing it all. Good burst of speed. But couldn't get it done. Maybe he just tried his knee there in coming across and making that challenge, Anthony Brown. It looked desperate as he tried his endeavor best to stop Page and the players take some more time to get refreshed because it's necessary. Yeah, it really is. sure you're counting down the minutes to half time so you can get some yourself Donald yes yeah, some and we're at a location that we're talking about extremes here at Glenmuir High if it gets overcast it's guaranteed that there will be rain so you can't even wish for overcast skies at this venue because then torrential rain will follow yeah you have to wonder what's the greater of the two evils yeah but it's well grassed. It will take some time for this field to be waterlogged, but you really don't want to test fate, do you? The keeper should handle this. Well, he did. Goalkeeper Thomas has retreated. Ball lofted inside. Oh, you missed time the jump there to get a proper connection on it. Cornel Smith. Yeah, that might have been the chance. That's their best chance of the first half so far, Kim Seal. Finally, breached that very technical back line. Had a lot of space, Smith. But yeah, as I said, really mistimed that header. Couldn't get any sufficient contact. Okay. 
No issues there for Thomas. Hurls it out wide to Henry. Veer dominating possession at 62%. Nicely done. Oh, he's in an offside position. Cameron Walters. And yeah, that's a shame because it was a really good take by Walters. They play around with this nicely. Kemsel coming forward. And the clearance made a play. It's down for Veer. And this effort is banged high by Dante Miller. Yeah, he would want that one, but Miller. He's their leader. Not only in a captain sense, but attacking wise as well. Scored two and assisted one of their four goals against Tatius Golding in their first game, Kemsil. But now it's a very technical as captain. Shuraya, Shuraya, that would need some assistance now. They don't want to see him down for too long, I can tell you that. But he is getting some attention from off the bench and he's sitting him up. Maybe just got a, a bit of a, a stamp on his foot. May have just left a mark there, a few studs. But the captain appears to be okay and should be able to to fight again and there's the other captain dante miller oh striding forward well that's a lovely ball inside and chambers again uncertain with that one coming towards him. But it did go behind for the goal kick. Yeah, maybe that one seemingly hit the post. I'm not quite sure. He definitely touched it. I thought he? he touched it, but apparently not. It was a goal kick and it's one that he has taken. And we're just like that to run the attack again. Yep, close to over the 60% range as far as the possession that they've had so far. With just about seven minutes to go in this first half. Shirai is back on the park for your technical, the captain. Thinking of a shot from distance. Goes charged down. Veer will go again. Sure, I just calming things down. Mm, disappointing. Don't expect that from Henry at all. But it happens at times. Yeah, he has been assured so far. Probably his first bad action, that one. Not seeming too costly at the moment.
couldn't quite get there, Miller. Henry. Latchman. Looking so assured. And then the delightful ball out wide. That's wonderful. Almost as if they're lining up. It's trickled through. And the shot and Chambers again. Holding on at the second attempt. His first touch may not be altogether sure, but he does enough to make the save more often than not, Omaria Chambers. Yeah, and he's keeping Kemsil in this game, actually. The United still turning up the pressure. Again, looking for the shot, and it's dribbled wide of the mark. Well, they are united, aren't they? <laughs> they are playing united. Very technical. Yeah. And they're playing Kemsil off the park, really. Goldburn. We've lost it. Nice few touches there. Still have possession. And uh, tripping over himself, goes the other way. Again, the hopeful ball over the top. And really can't get through Latchman or Scott. Ball played through the middle. Again, trying to line up a shot, was charged down. They've blocked quite a few. And here's Hansen from distance, well over the top. It's going to be a throw in. Very technical, not playing that one as smoothly as they have done at times throughout this first half. He doesn't look very happy, Howard Seifers, but I think that's just because his team hasn't scored more goals. Again, Kemsil give up possession to Veer Technical. And again, and uh, Veer, they usually keep it and create a chance. And here they are again. Walters. Ball dinked to the edge of the box. Lining up a shot again. Chambers with the save. Yeah, he's made some really, really important saves in this first half. That's another example. Lovely ball over the top. Fierce shot. So that's a good save down low. Yeah, Mario Chambers. Route one isn't working for Kim Sil. The long ball over the top to their lone striker. Passing it around isn't really working for them either. Certainly not as well as it's working for Veer Technical. Yeah, that's a foul. Can they create another big chance before the halftime interval? Veer Technical. Shannon, with his cultured left foot, is behind this one. Or Lennon, I should say, Malcolm Lennon is behind this one. <laughs> the 
lays it out wide. Walters overhooks it a little bit. Here they come again. Hansen touches it inside. They win it back. To the bylines. Sends it across. Oh, an own goal. Touched across the line by Robert Crawford. Unfortunately for him, you suspect that Chambers would have had that covered again. But Brown trying to make the clearance with a critical mistake right in front of goal and veer technical with a 2-0 advantage on the stroke of half time yeah mario chambers was proving difficult to beat by his opponents veer technical but unfortunately for him it was one of his own defenders stuck out a leg was really trying to stop that cross maybe a lack of communication chambers probably could have given a shout but yeah, Crawford really just trying to stop the cross. It's unfortunate. It happens. But unfortunately for Kems Hill, they're now two goals down to Veer Technical, and that goal comes right, really, on the stroke of half time. Well, he wasn't quite aware of his surroundings, was he? And in the end, made the mistake. And Veer Technical with a 2 0 advantage after Jamari Foster had opened the scoring in the sixth minute of play. It was an own goal by Anthony Brown that gave Veer Technical the advantage. That's going to be playing on his mind all through the interval, I'm sure. After 45 minutes, Kemsel, they know that they have a lot of work to do. Veer Technical with the advantage by two goals to nil. The Costa Cup action here, and it's Veer Technical. They are the ones who have the lead against Kems Hill. Veer, this is their first game of the season, and they have looked really smooth, really good, and they have the lead to show for it. Yeah, we said that Veer had created a lot of chances, and it started really early. This chance coming within the first five minutes of the game, but Amaria Chambers, he made a save. 
he could stop that one. This one, I should say, and it was a really good header. Cross coming by Nathaniel Henry. Jamari Foster getting Vera's account up and running for the season. And just like that, within six minutes, it was Vera Technical 1. Kems Hill, nil. Vera continued to pile on the pressure. And it was almost a double for Jamari Foster. Amari Chambers did really well to come out and sh shorten the angle. They continued to pile on the chances, but it has to be said, if it wasn't for Amari Chambers in that Kemsil goal, as he made save after save, the scoreline could have been much more. Malcolm Lennon decided to test his luck. He turned creator for this chance. It was taken down really well, but it was a good, sharp save once again by Chambers. But there's really nothing he could do about this one. Again, Lennon, creator, hands with the crossing, and then, yeah, Robert Crawford sticking this one beyond his own goalkeeper. They'll be disappointed about that one, Kem Sale. That's what made it 2 0. First half starts now. Yeah, a lot of shots for very technical. 11 to Kemsil, 6. 1 on target for Kemsil. The accuracy not there, but for very technical. 6 on target and 2 of those being goals. But, of course, 1 was an own goal. 4 falls for Kemsil, 1 for very technical. No yellows, no reds. 2 offsides for very technical. 3 corners for Veer. They're also leading in that regard. 5 saves that had to be made by Omaria Chambers. He's been impressive. And possession-wise, Veer also dominant. 58% of it and that has led to a 2 0 lead at half time. Kimani is somewhere around the ground and he has a water break from the fans. Yeah, it doesn't seem that Kimani is ready. Thank you guys, I'm here with a Veer Technical fan. I had to search the whole compound and I found a Veer Technical fan. He's been loud, he's been vocal. What's your name, sir? I'm Rowan, AKA Fuji. All right, Fuji, I have to ask you, how long have you been a Veer Technical fan? Well, for the past four or five years, I'm on the 14 side because my son was a player for the other 14. And so we just get familiar with that cool fan that since until just no, 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 presently. Okay, cool. So based on the game so far, yeah. you're 2-0 up. One yeah. of them was an own goal, but the team has been playing well, right? A goal is a goal. A goal is a goal. No matter what angle you come from, with different family, a goal is a goal. Did Coach Sifa speak to you before this game because you sound very similar to him? No, it's not really before this game this morning, but I spoke to him last night. Oh, so you have a link to the coach? Uh, yeah, in terms of man, I scoop this man. I cook him all this. That's supposed to lose this game because our training session is very, very good. I've never heard cookie ball before. You want to explain yeah, that? Yeah, man, cookie ball means I just say, man. You come like in the area, ah, so I don't want to ask the area to ensure food, you know. But now I'm a competitor. So you don't think, you don't think Kemp's has any chance of coming back? No, come back, man. I five people plan, people plan for them still, but if they get three, we accept it still. I just say, a goal is a goal. You understand? I just see him three points, so we have to appreciate all that. You understand? You said five goals, so you're predicting it to yeah. end five nil? Yeah, yes, man. Five love me up more, Philip, man. Come on, Wolf, I work. Come on, clear Garvey standard, you know, because Garvey is also. Oh, Garvey? I think Garvey scored a lot of goals the other day. I, I, I want love them get focused, something like that. But I think Cedric, Cedric beat um, I know Kem still uh, Cedric. What match did they go again? Cedric didn't come back 4 2. Come no, Kem still beat Foga. Um, Cedric 4 2. Yeah. yeah so I'm going to demolish this time now. I'm going to big man, a big man. Yeah, so I'm going to have 5 and score 4, more than 5. All right, you heard it here from Fuji. Three more goals incoming from Veer. Keep it here on, at Glenmuir in Clarendon. All right, thanks.
Well, the biggest part in sport is on your home of champions. The Jamaica Tadawas will take on the St. Lucia Kings. That's tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, 10 in the Eastern Caribbean time. And uh, in the evening, tomorrow, Amazon Warriors, the Guyana Amazon Warriors, will take on the Barbados Royals. Yep, that's 6 p.m. Jamaica time, 7 in the Eastern Caribbean. You can, of course, watch it on Sportsmax as well as on the app. Right here at Glenmuir High, Vera Technical in charge, in control over Kems Hill High School. Two goals to nil, the scoreline, and Veer were all over Kems Hill in that first half, Leger. Yeah, and that goal real at the end of the first half, I think, really sealed it for Veer Technical. Because Kems Hill, they were, them and their keeper, Mario Chambers, were really trying their hardest to keep out Veer Technical. Very technical, really at the better of it. Almost twice as many shots, much more possession. They look much more calm in possession as well. It, it's not only the fact that they had the ball, it was what they were doing with it as well. And eventually all that pressure told. It was an own goal, but yeah, very technical. Impressive against Kem Hill, as you mentioned so many times in the first half. Not for the first time over the past couple of years. Yep. They've been dominant in this fixture, they really have. They have scored just four goals, came sealed in their last 10 outings against Veer Technical. So they haven't quite been prolific. Veer has been in charge here. How about Cephas? Very much a, a hard task master. I suppose he would be impressed by what he has seen so far, although he's set to make a change. Kemoy Hunt is being taken out of the lineup. And Shabar Gardner replaces him. Gardner was also a part of the squad last season. But uh, he makes his start in this uh, 2023 edition of the Issa da Costa Cup. Let's see if Kemsil can mount a comeback against Veer. What will their response be? Well, here they go. Goldburn going long to the halfway line. Kemsil will get a free kick just inside their own half. Crawford punts it long, looking for his keeper, Dante Miller. And uh, that crosses the line, and it's going to be a corner kick to Kemsil. So... A bit of promise here for the team which trails. But they haven't utilized their set pieces well so far in this game. Let's see if there can be a difference made by the captain. It's not a bad one at all. The keeper comes out to collect. Good take by Ricardo Thomas. He bangs it upfield. And into touch, unfortunately for him. Yeah, it was a good claim though by Thomas. Really strong probably would have, would have been called a foul I think if he had spilled it but yeah really strong in his claiming there Kemp's Hill starting a, a bit better in the second half yeah they're starting off with some promise here let's see how 
they'll be able to maintain it if they can. Daly gets it back. Getting some help there from Dyke. Soraya has it for Veer. Robbed of the ball, tried to go into a challenge. He was late. The yellow card is going to be shown to the Veer technical captain. Yeah, that was a cynical one by Soraya. Really late, that challenge. Was robbed a bit by a couple of Kemsil players. And after that, he took no prisoners. We really have to do better with their set pieces, though. Kems Hill. Shara, not afraid to go in there with the, the big boot. Even in the aftermath of him getting a yellow card just a minute before. Oh, nicely done. Was he pulled down? The referee thought about it and then awarded the free kick to Veer. They want to take it quickly. And uh, Malcolm Lennon wasn't having any of it. He wants to do it properly. After all, no need to rush his team. Has the advantage. Two clear goals, in fact. Andre Scott. Behind this one for Veer. Chambers has had a lot of work to do, just reorganizing the two-man ball. Scott dinks it, Chambers collects. Smith manages to get a touch. Gets the return ball over the top, giving chase. Decides to leave it for his captain. First touch wasn't the best and couldn't keep it from crossing the line, Dante Miller. Yeah, it was a good idea all around there, but execution right at the very end. Let Miller down. Kemsil again showing some promise it's on the break there. Veer might have to be weary to weather this storm. In the opening exchanges of the second half. was a scut down after the fact. A stronger breeze here at Glenmuir High. In the second half, Dante Miller goes into the referee's book. Really strong breeze. Indeed. Lennon, oh lovely, gets it back luckily, sends it out wide, nice touch, almost went through, couple chances to clear, ball over the top, keeper, Chambers, gets there. Another challenge coming in. Ali, Ali. 
Junior Robinson. Behind this one for Kemsil. Dinks it inside. And uh, Thomas coming out. Very nice sort of playing within their, themselves with this two nil advantage, but th here they are coming forward. Oh, Scott back inside, was looking for the penalty. Play continues, here's a shot from distance, deflected! And off the post, and somehow it goes behind for the corner. Well, what a chance that was. Chambers full stretch to his right, could not get there, but the post was in the way. Yeah, the shot took a deflection and Chambers was beaten, you know. But somehow it went across the face of goal and out for a corner kick. And now it's in his grasp. Well, the form that he has shown in this game, Chambers almost deserved that look. Because as you mentioned, he certainly was beaten all ends up. And it would have been really hard on him for him to concede that one. Was there a handleball there? Well, it's going to be a free kick to Kems Hill. a very technical player down needing some treatment but it will be a chemsil free kick in a really dangerous area it's so very technical with a free kick in and around this zone in the first half it's going to be a substitution actually Looking like a double one. Mm. Wondering if both changes will be done before this free kick. I think they're going to take the free kick first. Goldburn is the one behind it for Kem Sill. Here's the kick. It's a good one. That is a fabulous save. He had to move quickly. Goalkeeper Thomas to his left to deny Goldburn. Well, that was poor from the captain. And maybe the changes will be made now. Not yet, I don't think. Yeah, 
hát azért. They give up the ball, but uh, Dante Miller was impeded. Certainly seems as that whatever Dwight Smith told his Kemsil troops at half time has worked a bit. 12 minutes in, over 12 minutes into the second half, and we have seen a serious improvement by them. Paul sent inside the area, headed away, but not convincingly. It's in a chance for Kemsil. Finally, they managed to clear their lines. Veer technical. Now the changes are going to be made, so Hansen is off. And so too Walters. <laughs> Romain McLean is on, as well as Kimani Gale. So the short corner for the first goal as the ball was sent inside and Jamari Foster opening the scoring in the sixth minute of play. Rising high, he was unmarked inside the box. It was poor marking, but Foster didn't care. He converted. And then on the stroke of half time, an own goal. Ball sent across the area and uh, young Crawford in the way and converting past his own keeper. Here is Veer, skipping on his left, driving straight to Chambers, who's back in the action once more. Yeah. It's a save that he should have made and definitely did. Keep uh, hesitating and then came out to make the pass. trying to switch the play. Veer players seem to be everywhere, actually. Except Veer, and the captain tries to get on it. But uh, was denied on that occasion. Here's an opportunity for Smith, forced wide. Kemsil continuing to show how much they have improved. They also made a change. Greg Hamilton, number 10, they are coming in. For Shamar Daly. Didn't see a lot from Shamar Daly in the first half and in the few minutes of the second half here.
Lennon on it. Trying to dribble his way through. Lennon sends it across. That's a delightful ball. He has space. And then ran into some traffic before his shot was deflected over. Well, it was deflected twice. Last touch came off him. In the end, Romain McLean. Yeah, I think he was too eager to get that shot off on his right foot as opposed to maybe taking it a bit quicker with his left. Lennon. Must be said that this game has looked a bit more competitive in the second half. We're having to work a bit harder. As Kemsil makes another change. The same Junior Robinson coming out, being replaced by Nathan Banks. Lanky number seven there. Oh, lovely burst of speed. Ball sent across, and the clearance goes behind for a corner kick to Kemsil. They look more and more dangerous now. Yeah. Had to get his foot on that as well. Henry Scott. Ball comes in at the near post. Was all it's going to be easily dealt with. Lovely switch of play. Ambitious effort to say the least. We are getting back into a rhythm. As it's getting a bit cooler, we can see that Kemsil is really turning up the pressure. Pressing the ball much quicker and with much more authority in the second half. Yeah, we mentioned earlier about overcast conditions here with a maybe extreme at times in terms of what to expect and as long as you see overcast conditions at Glenmuir you know that the rain is on its way well let's just enjoy these cool non-rain conditions while they last <laughs>
is going at it. Gets a corner for his team. Kick taken at the back post. That was an infringement on the play. I think Henry's milking it a little as well. Set piece chance here. Brewing for very technical. Couple of players over it. Left footed options. Right footed option. Let's see what they conjure up. Not a lot. Should have been so much better. Yeah, the set pieces on both sides, or set pieces for both sides, today haven't been of the best quality. Glenn Muir, this is their home ground after all. They're warming up for their encounter versus Central, immediately following this clash. Reigning Ben Francis, Cup champions, and we, as we have a water break. Not sure if it's as needed as the one in the first half, but still good for the hydration for both teams. Oh, definitely. Here's Andrew Peart getting his troops ready for what will be a very tough task against Central. And Howard Seifas getting his troops ready for what will be a or what could be a difficult 22 minutes central on screen now. They'll be taking on Glenn Muir. Central got all the way to the, the Costa Cup final. And the crowd is definitely out to see not only this game that's going on right now, but also the what you can call a showpiece match for the home team, Glenn Muir. Definitely excited for that one. Kemsel trying to go down that right hand side. The flag goes up on the far side. It's a free kick or throw in rather instead for Veer. Freaky coming in, and again, Kemsil, they've been a little disappointing with their set pieces, and Veer technical trying to counter now, but the ball was always trailing him as he tried to move forward, then he commits the foul. Lennon, disappointed with himself for not being able to take that opportunity. Ball over the top. Headed inside and probably too much behind that header. Too much force in the challenge. Yeah, 
not the best of passes there. Seen quite a lot of loose passing actually from Kemsale today. Can't say the same for Veer. I suppose Veer will argue and the coaching staff will argue that they could have been a little bit more clinical. But then again, it's hard to argue with the form of Omario Chambers in the Kemsale goal. I think he's one who has kept the score down. Well, here they come. Veer technical. Showed some good strength and the shot is over the top in the end. Got a lot underneath it. Scooped it well over. Well, I can't say Omaria Chambers is the only reason why the score is low. Hence me saying that they weren't clinical. But yeah. 2-0. It's a little bit kind for Kemsel, to say the least. As the sun revisits us, but it's not the same. And we accept that with gratitude. Page. Last touch of the striker. is just wide of the mark yeah it had some power there but lacking a little bit of direction Shabar Gardner who has come on as a substitute in the second half making Which his presence felt yeah trying his best to pick out the bottom corner with that effort the Mario Chambers was stretching I think at times very technical have overcomplicated it in the final third. Either that or just been too giddy to shoot. I think a bit more calmness in certain instances would have done them well. win by the diminutive number 10. Captain is down but not out. Doesn't need attention from off the bench. They give a possession. Effort from long range. Again, not on target. But they're firing it from all angles there. It was Lennon with that attempt on that occasion. Not clear properly. An opportunity from outside the box, looking for additional space. Drives it. Chambers with an excellent save again. Come on, Benna, Benna, come on. Come on, Benna. 
He really is on a mission, Omario Chambers. The nine, Malcolm Lennon. His first of the season. That's a strong hand, you know. Yeah, and once again, the nine veer technical. He really has been good today. Veer technical desperately looking for a third. Dinked inside the era, tried to take it on the volley. Did, in fact. But again, trying so hard is Lennon. Couldn't quite get one on, that one on target. Ball over the top, and the flag goes up for offside. Couldn't finish at any rate. Yeah, decided to try his luck regardless. Very technical, looking to play out of this Kemsil pressure, and they have done. Veer on the prowl again. The dance over at the far side not quite working. Another change to be made by Veer. And the goal scorer is coming off, Jamari Foster. Jaquan Thomas replaces him. Veer will try again to get a third. Sent high over the top. Veer again. And, uh, was there a clip from behind? There was. Free kick to Kemp's Hill. Dante Miller looking to switch the play. That's a delight. Oh, almost a perfect ball through to Nathan e. Banks. The glimpses that we've seen of a Kem Sil this afternoon shows that they could do some damage this season. They already have more points on the board combined this season than their past two. One point each in their last two seasons, Kem Sil. Yeah, Dante Miller is quite a player as well for Kem Sill. There he is. He's wearing the captain's armband this season. It's 
started the campaign with a, a couple of goals in his just a few days ago against Tasha Scolding, that victory. That pass is going nowhere. Page. It slipped all the way through to Amaria Chambers. Goes long again. <laughs> he was lucky. Very, very lucky. Gonna be a free kick for Kemsil now. See if they will put this one straight into the box. They don't. That's another foul and uh, a warning from the referee, and that's just about it. Now, will this one go into the box? There's delivery. Nodded away easily. Yeah, the referee detected a, a push there. As we take a look at the Sports Max at moment of the game, it was the first goal of this encounter. A short corner taken quickly, and no issues there for the goal scorer in the 18 yard box. He was unmarked, but he managed to direct that header well. Jamari Foster opening his account this season. Good goal, too. That's the Sports Max app moment of the game. There he is. One of the contenders for the play of the game, and uh, as we'll get into that momentarily. But it's a free kick for Veer Technical. Again, it's Lennon behind it, decided against going for the shot, although it it turned out to look a little bit more dangerous. Yeah, yeah I'm grateful. That then I'll bestow the MVP voting to solely me. <laughs> well, we can get to that in a, in a short while just to think about the options that you have in mind. Yeah. And if it is to be vetoed, we'll veto it. No, you, you can't give me the, <laughs> the reins and then want to take them away. You seemed hesitant, so I was just trying to bail you out as well. No, I'm, I'm quite sure-footed, like Omaria Chambers has been between the sticks for Kemsil today, but although we have done it before, I think it would be quite rough to 
give a goalkeeper that has lost two nil for the second for, game running for the second game <laughs> running but he has been the standout player on the field for me personally obviously very technical i've had their standout players as well latchman i think has been good at center back although he hasn't had too much to do lennon as well yeah malcolm lennon has been really impressive but if we're speaking about the overall performance of a player i think it would be really really difficult to look past omario chambers in the kemsale goal if he concedes one more goal i might have to rethink that position though Free kick to Kemsil. They will make another change. The captain is coming out. Ball sent inside the area, headed away. McLean now. Free kick in favor of Veer. Technical. Here's one of the candidates for MVP to swing this one in. Can he test the leader at this current moment, Amaria Chambers? Can Malcolm Lennon test him? Well, Lennon goes goalwards and uh, Chambers holds on again at the second attempt. I mean, he's done enough in terms of when he's making his saves, but I don't think he has looked as assured as I'd want to. I mean, yes, but I think he's just the... The final action that matters. He's made over 10 saves, I think, at this point. They're playing around with this, managing the time well. Good movement by Gale. Maybe that's a future battle somewhere between the youngsters.
sometimes with an MVP call it. We have to utilize what is known as the eye test, even if statistic doesn't back it up. Eh? Yeah, I think so. And, you know, speaking of that veto that you were mentioning, but I, 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 that's one. That this one is okay with me. I, th I think that Malcolm Lennon has deserved it. He has played a really good game, and that's the end of it. Yep, instrumental in how Veer Technical performed this afternoon. And uh, they come away with the 2-0 win. Uh, Open the scoring as early in the, as the uh, sixth minute through Jamari Foster. And then, and then an own goal from Robert Crawford. Just a handed of Veer Technical. All three points in the end. And they were in cruise control for that second half. And although Kemsil fought and uh, made sure that they weren't played off the park, they still went down by two goals to nil in the end. As we take a look at the full-time highlights here between Kemsil and Veer Technical. And... Uh, an opportunity early in the piece got a good hand on it did chambers moving smartly to his left and then the resulting corner kick delivery inside and the free header converted well and jamari foster opening the scoring in this game good finish under no pressure at all and uh, they had quite a few chances. And the Chambers was a nuisance between the sticks coming out and applying the pressure there. And again, the ball inside. And the Chambers spilling that one and then recovering well. And then he was safely behind that free kick attempt. This one driven from distance and wasn't too sure on that occasion. Omari and Chambers. But on this occasion, again, well behind it. Even if he had to mop up his own work, which he did on a couple of occasions, and then the own goal. Nothing he could have done about that one. Crawford unaware where he was. Under no pressure at all. Didn't need to touch it. Could have left it. Guided it into his own net. And that was right on the stroke of half time. Kemsil looked better in that second half. They had a few opportunities. Malcolm Lennon really wanted to be on the score sheet, but that was a fabulous save. It really was by Omaria Chambers. That's a strong hand that he got out there. But Veer in the end with the win. Kemsil with 12 shots, 6 on target. The majority of those shots came in the second half. Veer Technical with 19 shots overall and 12 on target. A, a quite a physical game with 25 fouls committed, but just a, a couple of yellow cards shown, both to Veer Technical. Veer Technical had the majority of the corners as well. Three more than Kemsil and Veer Technical with the majority of the possession at 60%. It's now time to see who are KFC big deal play of the game is thank you Donald I'm standing here with man of the match from Veer Technical Malcolm Lennon Malcolm you were our player to watch today yes. and you lived up to the billing how does it feel to be man of the match it was a great feeling this wasn't the expectation but we pulled through when you say this wasn't the expectation did you expect to give Kemsil more yes well, you weren't on the score sheet today, but you were really influential. Speak to me about the role your teammates played in adding to your game. Oh, yeah, very. Yeah, and in terms of tactics, I saw Coach Cephas with his 
board, yeah. moving the pieces around. Speak to me a little bit about the tactics and his... He just gave me a free roll and I did what he told me to do. And that's right. job finished. Thank you, Malcolm. Yes, thank All you. the best. Yeah. Yep, Malcolm Lennon there, most influential man on the park, depending on who you ask. I'm here with Coach Smith of Kemsill. Coach, it wasn't meant to be today, but speak to me about that improved second half. Well, um, second half, we made some adjustments um, based on what happened in the first half. No coach would want to risk, um, concede a goal in the first five minutes and then the last five minutes of the half. Psychologically, that took a toll on us, and we just couldn't get back. We thought our legs were a bit... Um, Stronger, seeing that is our second second game of the week, but but um, we'll take the better run for. In terms of regrouping and getting ready for Garvey, how do you go into that one? Yes, man, we're, de we're definitely gonna regroup and get um, get in shape for Garvey. We have another home match. This should have been our home game, so we have a home game. We, we hope the fans are not disheartened and, and will come out and, and and lend us support as well. Thank you, coach. All the best. Okay, same. All right, I'll be now joined by winning coach of Vertec, Coach Cephas. You said it yourself, just win. And that's what you did, Coach. How pleased are you with that win? Well, it's um, it just an identification of how we train, practice, and that's our philosophy. As I say, it's just, just a beginning. It's for the only one game. I say a long road to go, so don't get too conceited. I just play football to the best of my ability. What impressed you most about your boys' performances? Well, it's about discipline, you know, discipline and consistency. And that's what play pro football overseas in London. So, same mentality I'm trying to give up, give them to be a consistency. No matter what, or body playing, be consistent while you do properly. So, they did it and that's it. Thank you, Coach Cephas. Congratulations. Uh, thanks very much. Appreciate it. He he, he doesn't really look it, but he's a man pleased at the end of it, uh, Coach Cephas, as his team walked away with all three points and the victory here, 2-0 uh, for Veer Technical over Kems Hill High School. There will be tougher tests for uh, Veer Technical in the not-too-distant future, but uh, they have uh, three points under their belt, and uh, really and truly they want to go on from strength to strength after this wonderful performance. Yo, Issa. Our oh, school boy football look this season. People them ready, you know. All right then, he go, man in cup. Hold it for your shield, you make winning cup. See what the champions cup, Ben Francis, what a cup which team are win the championship this season. Yo, it's a four and dive a school, I got finished the league and beat now. Which you that got collect the golden boat and be the favorite for the people. Yo, it's a busy fans are roll out all boat, be a flag for a vehicle. Looking at the crowd, but slow the supporters from school and community too. People nothing at the stand, some of the superior. They must have a bunch of fun TV too. Country and turn your night for one reason. He's a schoolboy football. Run, come, look one, look all. Which team are the best and the better than the best and the fire team beat your chest? He's a schoolboy football. A team could rise and a team could fall. But they never will know until the whistle blows around. Come enjoy the show. Yo, he's a that competition I never have a nice up. People love see when boy I get nice up on the field. I'm going to 